since uh, the double helix was discovered, uh, scientists always, always wondered why this particular chemistry was used by nature for this most important, uh, uh, most important task in a living organism, the storage of genetic information. And they always wonder uh, whether it was just by accident that it, it just was first which worked, or it's really something you cannot even replace, uh, that it is the uh, uh, only way to do it. We know, of course, that in addition to uh, DNA, there is RNA. And uh, the uh, most accepted view right now is that before life evolved to what, how we know it now, consisting of DNA as genetic material, uh, proteins are uh, 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 molecules which execute all uh, reaction in, in uh, the cell. Originally, RNA was the most important molecule. It was RNA, because we know that RNA can be enzyme, uh, have enzymatic properties, that RNA can replicate itself. So we believe that the first was so-called RNA, it's called the concept of RNA world. But RNA actually and DNA are, are, are so close to each other, they are, they, the difference between them is, is very small. So they are essentially the same type of molecules. And uh, again, scientists uh, were, uh, always uh, wanted to know whether you can replace uh, DNA in RNA with something else which will behave a similar way. So in other words, whether life based on different types of uh, molecules uh, possible. And uh, this is how this artificial DNA uh, uh, concept uh, appeared, and uh, uh, chemists start synthesizing all kind of analogs, trying to figure out whether they can play the role of DNA. And uh, one of this um, very successful analog uh, was synthesized and put forward in uh, 1991, beginning of very beginning of the 1990s, by uh, Peter Nielsen, uh, pr professor at Copenhagen University and his colleagues. This uh, m modification, uh, it's, it's actually significantly different molecules than DNA. It has the same basis uh, uh, of DNA. Everybody remembers that DNA consists of DNA strand consists of sugar phosphate backbone and bases ATGC, which are attached to this backbone. And uh, this uh, Peter Nielsen group, they uh, completely change the backbone. Their backbone in, in molecule which they put forward, which is called PNA, peptide nucleic acid, is um, uh, it has the same basis as DNA, uh, but the sugar phosphate backbone is replaced by peptide backbone, which is not in, uh, exactly the same as backbone of protein molecule, but very similar. And so uh, this was essentially the first successful uh, artificial DNA, successful in the sense that of course, you can synthesize whatever you want, but the, it was successful in the sense that it formed double helices. If you take, uh, take one PNA strand and complementary PNA strand, it forms the double helix like DNA, a little bit different parameters, of course, but in principle, it is uh, double helix and uh, forming the same ATGC base pairs uh, uh, as in, in, in DNA. And, uh, uh, it interacts with uh, DNA and RNA, forms, <laughs> it can form duplex with DNA strand and can mm, form duplex with RNA strand and it can form even more 
uh, a complex structure like triplexes when you have two PNA strands and one DNA strand, this uh, is, is, is also possible. So it forms or all kinds of structures with DNA. And it was the first in the now pretty large family of artificial DNA molecules, which have different uh, backbones, different structure, chemical structure than uh, traditional uh, 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 natural uh, nucleic acid DNA and RNA. And th this is now a very, very large field with many uh, different applications, this artificial DNA field. We studied this uh, for many years because I started collaborating with Peter Nielsen uh, very early when he just put forward his uh, um, idea of PNA. And uh, we uh, studied PNA and our interest was to uh, figure out what kind of uh, structure PNA can form with DNA, with double-stranded, mostly with double-stranded DNA. And it was the first example uh, PNA when we were able to uh, invade into the double helix. So what PNA does with, the, with DNA, it has so high affinity to uh, one of two complementary DNA strands that it, 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 it does grab the strand and uh, the other uh, complementary DNA strand becomes becomes looped out. So you, you ca it, 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 it really open up the double helix in, on significant length. So if you have, say, one, 10 nucleotides in a row, which can bind to this PNA, PNA will grab this and separate the strand. And then you have single strand, that's the second strand, single strand. Is the rest of DNA will remain double stranded. So it's, it's very local. Uh, local interaction. And uh, this is extremely interesting because it allows to analyze DNA in totally and manipulate with DNA in totally new way, which was is impossible uh, otherwise. So this uh, uh, PNA uh, uh, proved to be extremely interesting and important. And other artificial DNA molecules, there are many, I will not uh, name them because there are many of them, they also find more and more application. And uh, of course, um, uh, great interest was uh, uh, appeared when a paper uh, was published uh, which claims that this artificial DNA molecule actually can replicate, can, uh, you can modify enzyme uh, which work normally with DNA in such a way that they start working with artificial uh, DNA molecules. And then it opened way to create new type of life because to, to get new type of life, you, you need not only the genetic molecule different, but you need all uh, machinery uh, which, is, uh, which is in place in the cell to replicate these molecules to, uh, to and so forth and so forth to make them really genetic material, genetic material which can be, mm, uh, pro, uh, uh, which can proliferate from uh, generation to generation. And so now uh, the concept of life, different life than we, uh, the life we know uh, it, 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 it uh, stop being uh, uh, just uh, science fiction, it is actually becomes more or less real. Uh, there are many aspects of uh, general theme of artificial DNA. And one uh, is uh, uh, this attempts to, very exciting, uh, attempts to do new type of life based on different uh, uh, molecules, not uh, DNA and, uh, and RNA, but it is not, uh, I actually myself is not involved in this. Uh, what we are doing and uh, uh, many other groups are doing is to use PNA and its analogs and other uh, artificial DNAs to 
uh, develop new tools for manipulating with DNA, new tools for DNA diagnostic, new tools for pathogen diagnostic, and so forth. So it is more applied research because we, for many years, we studied uh, the basics of how artificial DNA, how PNA interacts with DNA, what kind of uh, complexes and ca can form with this, especially this very interesting complex when uh, PNA invades into double helix and displays the strand. And then we started applying this for uh, developing new types of diagnostics. And uh, th th this is very interesting and uh, uh, very promising uh, directions. Uh, so there are two essentially big uh, uh, directions, one direction in, in more uh, science fiction stuff, uh, art, new type of life, other more pedestrian type uh, which are more <laughs> involved is uh, using it for all kind of uh, biophysical and microbiology and all kind of other tools.